This is, well, this is the new $280 USB dynamic mic from the company Beacon. And if you're saying to yourself, Beacon, I've never heard of anything from the company Beacon before. Well, that's because this is their first product. Well, it's the company's first product, but it's also kind of not because you've probably heard of the Go XLR, you know, that super popular audio device that's become like the staple streamer device on almost every desk. Well, the two creative leads behind the Go XLR, Craig and John, don't actually work for Go XLR anymore. They left Go XLR a while ago and they started their own company, Beacon, and they released this USB microphone alongside two other mixers called the Beacon Mix and the Beacon Mix Create, which by the way, we posted a video on that this morning as well. Once you're done with this video, make sure you go check out that video. I'll link to it down below in the little eye up in whatever corner the eye is in, but I digress. Let's get back to the $280 part because that is uh, pricey for a USB microphone, pretty much double what the standard for USB mics cost right now. And I have a feeling that's gonna be the determining factor of whether or not someone likes or dislikes this microphone. So let's make that the central point of this video. Why is this mic $280? And even if there is a decent reason for it, is it worth spending $280 on? So I picked this microphone apart and I came up with a list of seven things seven reasons why this mic costs $280. Let's jump into it and take a look. So this won't be a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on exactly how to use every aspect of this microphone because as we get into here, you'll start to notice there's a lot in this, but I will be posting that tutorial uh, sometime next week. So if you'd like to be notified when that happens, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and uh, hit the bell. And while you're down there, hit the like button because you're a dope person. And that's what dope people do. But if you are a little bit of an impatient person, maybe you want some questions answered before the tutorial goes live, uh, pop into my live stream. Link down below, I stream three days a week and we talk about stuff like this. So make sure you subscribe to my personal channel as well. But let's take a look at some of the mic stuff here because right out of the gate you can see there's a lot going on here that we've never seen before in a USB mic. We've got our EQ settings up here. We've got this weird squiggly line down here. We've got a bunch of other effects happening in these little tabs and in these knobs. There's a lot going on, but I want to focus on this squiggly line down here because this is something very new. This is called a timeline meter. Traditionally, when you're setting the gain of your microphone or how loud you have your microphone set to be, you're looking at a meter, something kind of like on the right side of the screen, and you're trying to watch the loudest points and kind of the middle points of a sentence and try to adjust based on where you remember them being at, and it's hard to do. This shows the volume of your voice over a long period of time. So you can see as I'm talking, it goes up and down with the volume of my voice and I can see over the course of a whole sentence what is the overall volume of this microphone and it looks like I need to probably turn it down one decibel because I'm usually hovering in the top area of this green area that we want. There, I think that actually looks a little bit better, maybe a little bit more balanced. Yeah, look at, look at this one. That was perfect. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these. And I don't just mean in a USB microphone. I studied sound recording in college. I've worked in professional audio softwares like Pro Tools and Logic, and this is the first time I've ever seen a timeline meter. And I'm all for it. This is the easiest it's ever been to set up the gain of my microphone, which is easily the most important step of a microphone, which is why it's my reason number one. By the way, now is probably a good time to let you know that this video is not sponsored by Beacon. They're not paying me in any way. They're not seeing this video anytime before you are. They did send me this microphone, however, for me to test and review it. That being said, let's move on here. I want you to take the idea of this timeline meter, by the way, and kind of set it as your bar for the way things work in here moving on. You'll understand that in a moment. Down the signal chain here, we have a handful of effects that in the tutorial coming out next week, I'll dive much deeper into so you can see exactly how to use each one. But you should know going through these, I haven't touched any of these. These are already set with presets that are very finely tuned. And for the most part, as long as you set your gain properly, which again, is very easy to do now, these should already be set to go exactly how you need them. You shouldn't have to touch your compressor. For example, noise suppression is very similar to RTX voice, where it recognizes when you're talking and when you're not and tries to figure out what the baseline sound of your space is and remove it while you're talking. And the expander is very similar to a noise gate, but just on a completely different level and again, 
I'll get into that in the tutorial. And the compressor actually shows you how much of your voice it's lowering during the loud moments. They rebuilt all these plugins from scratch to not only be super powerful, but also simple and intuitive enough that someone without any kind of audio background can use them and understand them, which is reason number two for the price of the microphone. And that leads us to reason number three, which is probably the most practical reason for the price of the microphone. And that is that all of these effects that we just briefly went over are actually being processed on the microphone itself. There is a built-in DSP that's actually pretty powerful, like significantly more powerful than the processor inside the GoXLR. And this accomplishes two things. First, it unloads the load off the PC, meaning let's say you turn on noise suppression because you're in kind of a noisy environment in your stream room. It doesn't make you drop frames inside your game or, or drop any OBS frames on your stream because your PC is not processing any of it. Secondly, because it's all happening in here, it means you can actually hear those effects in real time. So if you turn on compression and EQ, when you're hearing your voice back in your head, you hear what your audience hears. They even added a 10 second record and playback button down here so you can record a whole sentence and then listen to it back in your headphones while you're adding and changing effects and hearing those changes in real time all due to the onboard process. And if I get any comments on Activate Windows, I'm gonna throw down. You can't make me do it. Speaking of plugging in headphones, you may have noticed earlier on the headphones tab, there's a little option over here for high impedance mode. So for all the people who've asked me over the years, can I use high impedance headphones like the DT990s that Ninja uses? Can I plug them into my GoXLR? And my answer was always, and not really. Well, you can now because they put a high power headphone amp right in the back of the microphone, which is my reason number four. Four? Yes, four. Dude, you struggle with this a little bit. Which is my reason number four. Four? Yes, four. <laughs> is one that anyone with an audio back Don't do drugs, kids. Reason number five is one that audio engineers are gonna love, and that's that everything happening in here is being processed in 32-bit float. And what that means for everyone else is that if you combine that with the secondary clip guard preamp built into this, it is nearly impossible to clip your voice, no matter what you do. Look at, the, look at the squiggly lines, how far off the chart they are, and I'm not peeking. If you want a little bit of a deeper explanation of 32-bit float, That'll be in next week's video tutorial. Beacon today also released two mixers that I mentioned before. Again, make sure you watch that video after this one. But the Beacon Mix Create is built for power users with a handful of really powerful tools like submixes, routing tables, multiple outputs you can switch back and forth between. And they essentially added every single feature of that mixer into the microphone. You can see in the software I have my microphone and its features, and then I have my mixer and its features right here. But if I unplug my mixer, you can see the mixer option is right inside the microphone. And I can enable that. And it looks exactly the same. Of course, it being software, you're not gonna get the hardware knobs and the mute buttons like you get from actually picking up the mixer. You'll have to use your mouse and keyboard for it, but the features are all still there. And then lastly, reason number seven, which is arguably the most important one, it's a good sounding microphone. It stands really well against other classic dynamic microphones like the Shure SM7B and the RE20 that are not only more expensive, but you also have to buy an interface for them to work. Here, let's run a quick side-by-side -side sound test while I shamelessly plug stream beats. This is the Shure SM7B plugged into the GoXLR with no effects on it. It sounds pretty good. In fact, it almost sounds as good as stream beats, which is the best copyright free music for streamers you can find. Tons of genres, thousands of tracks, zero DMCAs, and totally free. Links down below. And this is the Beacon mic, also with all of the effects turned off. Just like your ears are turned off when you listen to anything other than stream beats during your live streams. And here's the Beacon mic with the built-in EQ and compression. It's honestly pretty impressive how powerful some of these built-in tools are to polish your voice. Almost as powerful as stream beats is at making you a better streamer getting more viewers and becoming famous. Stream Beats cannot actually make you a famous streamer. That would be ridiculous. So yeah, the microphone is $280 because they threw everything at it from super premium hardware to completely redesigned software, which is probably some of the best consumer audio software I've ever seen. But if $280 is far outside your budget, none of this really matters 
because there are really good USB microphones that are way more affordable than this. And also maybe most of these features are more than you ever wanted or needed in your microphone. And that's a totally valid argument. Not everything you own and use needs to be premium. So when it comes to Beacon and their super high-end microphone, which is at least at the time of filming this video, unquestionably the highest quality USB microphone you can buy. The thing they're gonna be fighting against the most isn't gonna be, is this microphone really worth $280? Because it is. And by the way, if you're not fully convinced of that, again, I'll push it one more time, subscribe for the tutorial next week. We didn't even get into the EQ or into any of these plugins. The uphill battle that Beacon's gonna be fighting is gonna be how many streamers really want a premium microphone and how many streamers are just fine with an affordable microphone that picks up their voice. And at that point, my opinion doesn't really matter. That's gonna be more on you. <laughs> However, I have already- Can you not? <laughs> a good boy. But yeah, I have told the guys at Beacon that I wanna invest in their company and be a part owner. So we'll see how that conversation goes. And now is the time for you to go and watch- Just go watch the Beacon, the other Mix and Mix Create video right now. The squeaking's gonna happen. It is what it is. Happy streaming.